Some of us techie geeks have been waiting a long time to witness the fully automated life of the Jetsons. Remember Rosie, she was the Jetsons robot who cleaned the house, did the dishes, and served the food. In 1956, the world met what was to become the standard science fiction robot for years to come. Of course, there was Will Robinson's robot from Lost in Space. But here in 2010, are we any closer to having our very own robots? Robots, including Rosie. That's the topic of this TV Kim video essay. But first, a word from our sponsor, GoToMeeting.com. If you've ever hosted or attended an online meeting and think it was difficult to use or unreliable, you need to try out GoToMeeting.com, brought to you by Citrix. GoToMeeting is the easiest for you and your meeting attendees. Collaborate with colleagues in real time. Present right from your desktop to clients around the globe. Plus, one low flat monthly rate lets you hold as many meetings as you want, including phone and voice over IP conferencing. Kim TV viewers can try it free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use promo code KIM. Think of all the robots that you know. Well, it seems like we know them, yet none of them exist in our everyday lives. Do you remember from Austin Powers? The fembots were gorgeous, lifelike, robotic supermodels on a deadly mission. What is it, Daddy? <laughs> Robin Williams played a robot who began his life as a family helper and concluded it as a human being in Bicentennial Man. The film raised questions about what it actually means to be human. Oh, hell no. And in stark contrast to that, in the year 2035, Will Smith plays the skeptical police detective who never trusted the robots, and as it turns out, with a good reason. Isaac Asimov's masterpiece, I, Robot, asks the question, how will we prevent them from taking over? So the question for 2010 becomes, where are all the robots? They were predicted to be here years ago. Well, the good news is that working robots, and yes, while they don't have humanoid features, they are real robots, and they're becoming more and more a part of our lives. Maybe you're already familiar with the Roomba. No, it's not too exciting, but it is a working robot. Roomba uses sensors to automatically vacuum your house. You don't even need to be home. It's estimated that there are more than three and a half million service robots in use today, and nearly one million industrial grade robots. But today's robots do more than vacuum. These are Neo robots on display in Shanghai. As you can see, they can dance. Synchronized to perfection, these robots have all the right moves. Okay, if you're more the touchy-feely type, the Para might be the robot for you. Go ahead, stroke it, pet it, love it. The Para was created to mimic the harp seal. Its realistic features are amazing. It will respond to petting by wagging its tails. Its eyes open and close. And it can even learn reactions and make seal-like sounds. The Para is a therapeutic robot designed to be used in hospitals and senior homes to provide a calming and soothing effect. These furry, adorable robots have been for sale to the public since 2004. Now, if you're still not impressed, this next robot, well, takes it up a notch and then some. Meet the Gynoid. She's a humanoid robot designed to look just like a woman. So far, these life-size beauties have been used to do domestic type work, both in the home and at work. They've also been used to teach small children. On the flip side, these Gynoids have also been used as a, get this, a sexual aid. Let's see, cleaning, secretarial work, and sex. The gynoids also prove that stereotyping is alive and well in the robotic world too. Don't smirk now. Robotic scientists predict that one of the first uses of truly lifelike robots will be as a sexual surrogate. I just wonder if they can make a version that can be programmed to replace the toilet paper roll too. For more free videos about everything digital, stay right here at tvkim.com.